happy to um, introduce you to uh, Jerry Robinson. She is, again, the author of A Cut Above, and she's a creative force between plant and seed designs. She's a regular contributor to McCall's Quilting, McCall's Quilt Quilts, and other nationally known uh, magazines. In, she's enthusiastically endorsed by Beth Hayes, very enthusiastically endorsed by Beth Hayes, who's the editor of McCall's Quilting, and she's in booth number 649 on our Martingale author pod. Please welcome Jerry Robinson. I just want to get a quick idea of who my audience is. Shop owners? Shop owners with who also teach? Fantastic. Thank you for coming. Has anybody, have you received my, have you purchased my book yet? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what I hope to share with you today is, is the story full of quilts behind A Cut Above that will inspire you to not look at this book as just another pretty book, you know, to sit on your shelf or to merchandise with fabric, but rather to use it like I have, as a class planning book. And I'm going to show you how to look at this book through a shop owner's and a teacher's pair of eyes, even though I'm not, not a teacher. So A Cut Above, as the title states, is a compilation of 18 different projects using the industry standard pre-cut fabric patches. We start in the book with the smallest pre-cut, which is a two and a half inch square, and we kick it off with Trail of Stars. Nothing new, nothing fancy. You've seen it before, what's the big deal? Well, let's look at it this way from a shop owner's perspective. It's simple, it's small, it's quick, it's easy. Here you have your little pack of two and a half inch squares. You want to help promote the book? Buy the book, get, get a free pack, or get a free pack of squares. Or the other idea that I had for you guys is buy a pack for a block swap. Come in, put a put it put put a nice attractive little price point on this. They come in, you have a vast assortment of the various different collections. They walk out with a charm pack, or a, a, a mini pack, a candy pack, and then go home, make the three stars, because that's exactly how much this pack will make with some leftovers. Because we know everybody has their favorites in here, so this still allows them to pick and choose what of their favorite prints are. So buy it, come back next week with your three finished blocks, and let's do a block exchange. Oh, how fun would that be? So you make three, come back the next Saturday or the next week, you make three, you get three. And hopefully you've, you've congregated enough people so that in the exchange of all the blocks, they then go home the next week, put all those finished blocks together into a quilt, come back the next week, and maybe that's the week you have as your, hey, let's sign up for the classes. So with that in mind, here's your kickoff piece. To, to generate excitement, get them in, get them excited, get them back in. Here is, um, <laughs> Autumn's Glow. Once again, a very simple, small, easy piece, not intimidating, but from a shop owner and a teacher's perspective, or let me back up a little bit, the entire book, all the designs in a cut above, were designed around half square triangles, flying geese, square and a square, and a quick angled corner. All three of those elements, I know I listed four, but all three of those elements are featured right here. So this could be the foundation class that you teach your students all the techniques they will need to know and master, they don't even have to master them, know and master, and they will be able to make all the quilts in the book. We all know each shop has their own distinct look, and I'm sure each shop has their own preferred rulers because there's a lot of rulers out there that make a very basic technique 
even easier and faster. You could dissect this quilt, the, this, this quilt itself, and show one, two, three, four different ways of making a, a half square triangle with different tools, different papers, or if you've got 12 ways, just dissect it that much more. But here you've got four opportunities, minimum, to show different techniques and ways to, to make a half square triangle. There's eight flying geese on here. Once again, whatever your favorite method is for your shop or whatever new tool that you get excited about here at Market, here's eight different ways you can show them to make a flying geese. And then a square and a square. So again, it's a small project packed with a lot of different ways that they can learn very simple techniques, go away with a finished piece, feeling pretty good, and then getting excited about knowing if I can do this, then no other project in the book is an obstacle. Then we jump right into the mini rose sampler. Again, more half square, more uh, flying geese, uh, more square and a square. But what this offers you is if you've got that beginner cl that, that class that you want to teach, applicate. Or you have your customers coming in that want to learn how to work with wool. Very simple, not intimidating, very easy shapes, very small shapes. And then you can teach them your method and your way of working with wool and or fabric applique. Again, not an intimidating piece, truly a piece that they can leave at the end of your class or finished or almost finished. So this is Wild Rose Sampler. And these are all, this, this is the first chapter still talking about the charm squares. So these are all made with a pack of charm squares. Then we jump to gelato. This, this you could have fun and title, and title the, the class, what? <laughs> charm square makes this? True story. Get a char pack of charm squares and you can see the, these were used for the charms. Grab some background fabric and grab your solids. Solids are everywhere. They're the staple of a store. Border and binding. It's a charm square. And this is called gelato. It's fun, again, it's not big, not time consuming. It's one block repeated. And then you could, the other part of the class is to teach them how to create that piece sashing that creates that little secondary design or that star. So that's gelato. The other thing I wanted to point out, as I go through the book, the book truly is laid out the way that I'm sharing it with you. It's laid out in chapters, and the chapters are laid out specific to a particular cut of fabric or pre-cut. So we just walk through chapter one, which is the base or the foundation, starting with a two and a half inch square to the five inch charm square. Now we're gonna jump into the 10 inch square. This particular quilt is called Galaxy. This was not made from a specific um, layer cake, but rather my own um, fabrics that I cut up in 10, in, in 10 inch squares. This quilt is fun, and the class that you could teach with this is the power of color or the power of placement. And I want to show you why. Who thinks they know what the block is here? Do people think it's a star? It's not. Here is the block. Two, four, six. The block is this right here. Right here. By de emphasizing the star points and emphasizing the dark color for the background, this is your block. But when you put it together, here come the galaxy of stars. Again, it, it, it could be intimidating, kind of looks difficult. Not. It's not. There's your block. And it consists of a square and a square. One, two, three, four flying geese. Two inch corners. You're done. And just replicate, sew together, you have a galaxy. Not hard. From there, 
we have our friendship quilt. And this class would be fun. You could play, you could play off of the actual quilt's name and have a class with Bring a Friend. And here's why. Once again, we're still we're in still chapter two, 10 inch squares. You have your 10 inch squares that were cut for the piecing, add your background and your outer border. Once again, here's those flying geese and there's your half square triangles, real easy. Guess what happens? You've got enough leftovers that you can do si do. These honest to goodness are the leftover scraps from friendship. No additional fabric other than the background was needed to make this. So bring a friend and do si do. And look what class you get. You get a friendship quilt and a framed piece. And once again, you do not have to frame these pieces. I chose to just for something different because of how I'm going to then use them in my home. But I, it, it's just, it's not a new approach. It's not a new idea by any means. But then that also gives me a shared idea with you. If you're close to a, a framer or you have a relationship with a framer, partnership, you know. The other idea, you know, to help, to help promote the book and to help you promote the classes since these framed pieces are truly very easy to make and quick, you could farm them out to your staff. They could make them. If you wanted to frame them, frame them and put them on a very significant wall in your shop, either if it's to your back wall of your, your, cash, your cash wrap, your register, or off to the side or in your classroom. It makes a great display when you group them together. And if you, if you create them in your own shop's colors, then it, is, it becomes personal for you and it is a reflection of you and your shop. So after we, we get done with a little do-si-do, -si -do, we're going we're gonna to go dancing among the stars. <laughs> this one is, are you kidding me? No way. Really? Seriously? Layer cake. It is. Layer cake, as you can see, with all of the, the scrappy piece pinwheels. Throw in your solids again for your companion star's background border binding. It's a layer cake. How mind-blowing would that be to kit this with just a layer cake and what it needs and tell people this equals this? You see it? I know. <laughs> Okay, that wrapped up chapter two, 10 inch layer cakes. We're gonna swing into um, the two and a half inch strips, jelly rolls. And this is another great um, class to have with bring a friend or bring three, and I'll tell you why. This one is called buttoned up. And we all know, this, we all know who our students are who like the fabric exactly the same for each block. We know who they are. We love them dearly. We do. We do. <laughs> and they e and you even have the, the student who will take the magnifying glass to the book to make sure that that print of their block is in the exact place of it. We know. We love them. We truly <laughs> love them. So here's buttoned up. So you have, those, you have those students who are all buttoned up. But then you also have those students who throw caution to the wind, and they're carefree and fancy free. Wow. This is the same design. It's the same design. Once again, the class could be the power of placement, the power of control, or no control. Okay. So buttoned up and carefree. Now where does that third frame come in? Guess what? With the leftovers, once again, we always look we always have leftovers. We always do. I, I love leftovers to eat, <laughs> but I don't like leftover fabric. So look at what we got. We have a buttoned up cushion, and we've got pillows. Or a super-sized pink cushion. <laughs> Super size pink cushion. <laughs> what is that? Great. So you can.
you'd have your, your, the two friends doing the quilts, and the other friend going, come on, just give me your scraps, what's taking you so long, hurry up, hurry up, and they make the, the pillows to coordinate. So that wraps up, that was three projects, one jelly roll, well, one jelly roll per quilt. So you get one jelly roll, one quilt, and accessories. So then we jump into the next cut of fabric, which is the Fat Eights. Um, this was done with one Fat Eight pack. And once again, you can identify you know, the additional fabric as the stars, background, inner and outer border, and binding. And we have a little trend going. We've got leftovers. <laughs> and with the leftovers, we're going to take a digital trip around the world. Those, these leftovers came from that quilt with some background and some outer border. And this kind of, too, you know, that speaks very traditional if you have that traditional person. But then you have, maybe bring your daughter who's just getting into quilting. You know what you're doing here. You're sewing squares. What a great beginner project, but a feel-good project. So that's a digital trip around the world. So that gets us out of the fat eights, and we jump into fat quarters. The fat quarters who have been the pillars of our industry, they were the first ones at, to market with, with their special cut. We're gonna, we're gonna turn it this way. Oh, sorry. This one, this one is called Rugby Stars. And who remembers the rugby t-shirts with the nice, bold stripe? Mm -hmm. Anybody? <laughs> and then what kind of tennis shoes did you wear with your rugby stripe shirt? Starsky and Hutch tennis shoes. <laughs> Did you? That's what I call them. You know, you know the, the, the shoe with the, the original swoosh? I call them Starsky and Hutch. But anyway, so this is Rugby Stars. And this one is probably my most, most fun to talk about because in addition to this quilt, we get multiple projects like before. But this one, this one plays right into Go Green, Recycle, Recycle, Recycle. And here's what, here's what gets recycled. This starts out as a four and a half inch square that's laid on top of a four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangle. So you do that stitch and flip technique and then when you trim it, you have a significant chunk of fabric left that's already cut in a rectangular shape. Well, guess what we do, ladies? <coughs> We make leftovers. So all the trimmed corners, all the trimmed corners become these blocks. Those, those are your trimmed star points recycled into new blocks that we create to call board game. And again, there's enough left over to do two, oh, not two one. three, not, not one, one. <laughs> not one, not one cushion, but two cushions. And ladies, the instructions on how to do a boxed button tufted cushion is included in the book. So all of a sudden, the book is no longer a quilter's book. It also becomes a home deck book, a sewer, a so you know what I mean? So we kind of we kind of try to, to play in all the sandboxes. So this is Rugby Stars board game, and then board game cushions or pillows or box pillows. And then our last quilt, we're still, we're still working with fat quarters. Our last quilt is called um, Moon. Oh my goodness, do you think I would remember this? Moonlight. Okay, Moonlight. Once again, nothing hard. You use a log, log cabin style background. Put your stars, put your cornerstones in there, your stars, border it with stars, fault, you know, crawl under that at night, and good night. So, so again, like I said at the beginning, I hope 
I hope if, you are, if you're on the fence about getting this book, we've kind of inspired you to buy the book. And I truly hope that your book looks more like this as a shop owner, teacher planner, than this. But